So I guess I'm going to start out with just talking about this display over here. This is Champion's Basket. Um, but I just wanted to talk, you can put a whole bunch of sweatshirts on one rack. We could have filled it all up with sweatshirts and what would it look, have looked like? Just sweatshirts, right? You can, you can put anything you want with that. But it makes it more interesting when you involve some other colors that blend together. They don't have to match perfectly. It can be, um, you could have added some stuffed animals, some candy. You know, so I didn't have everything filled in. You don't have to, but you can. But the whole idea is that it's more eye appealing this way. Do you see what I mean? Um, again, just so everybody knows, this basket is for sale on a silent auction. You're gonna get 24 of each of all the t-shirts, all the sweatshirts. There's more underneath to fill that 24 out, so they're not all out. And that's true in your stores too. Sometimes you, you don't have all your sizes out or you don't have all of one particular thing out. Um, another thing I wanna tell you about is a couple of things that I use as just props. Um, this one I have hanging in my store above, or above my candy. Um, I use a lot of these kinds of things. And sometimes I pick these up at rummage sales, anything. You know, just, just to add a little color, or add a little bit of eye appeal to any display. You know, color, anything like this. And you don't have to be that creative to plop a little piece of flower into a pail like this. Um, these, I got them when they were on sale for $2.99 and I colored them all different colors. I just spray painted them all different colors and um, I made a little kids section with that and those kids went crazy. <laughs> they came in there and they're, Mom, did you see that? And I mean, it really boosts sales. Um, these crates are, again, you can make any display any place you want, just mix it up with that, okay? Um, another thing I do is when I'm shopping, I kind of decide, okay, I want to do a colorful display. I think I'm going to do a lot of reds and blacks because those, those are what sell. So if you have a lot of blacks, you want to pop that with, and you can pop that with a blue or with a yellow or any colors you want, but you can see I kind of buy things to kind of pull out all different kinds of things. You know, coffee mugs, um, toys for the kids, hats. And then the same thing here. I, all these things are for sale, except like this, I, you know, that's just a decoration. But the rest of it, the plaques, you know, the sunglasses, you know, the little stuff for all the kids, the bag, everything kind of goes together. The colors don't have to match perfectly, but it was, I kind of went with the blue thing. Okay? Um, those are just some of the quick things I did. And now um, the girls are going to bring up a couple things, and then we're just going to open it up and let everybody talk about questions they have and we'll kind of go from there. Um, so one of the things that we, or that I've seen quite a bit um, out in stores is people are taking just a small um, tabletop, maybe something like that rounded um, structure there and they are theming that with their weekend. I'm assuming all of you guys have themed weekends, is that right? Yeah, so if it's 4th of July weekend, um, we would pull everything red, white, blue, um, stars, stripes, anything that would, you know, that we have in our store. And we, we completely redo that whole structure with those items. So then that way it matches the theme right when they walk in the door, um, they see this, the stand filled with those kind of things. Um, and then when Hawaiian weekend comes, we do the same thing there. We'll put on, you know, swimming suits, flip flops, all that kind of stuff, anywhere from keychains to clothing to... Um, we might even put out like drink specials that might be in the store or coffee shop. Um, so that's something that I suggest doing. Uh, that has been a neat thing. And some they'll just use like the little chalkboards from Hobby Lobby or Michaels to write some of those fancy little things of what the theme weekend is um, and specials like that. Um, there was another thing that she had mentioned. I forgot, but I want to circle back to that. Um, and one thing in your store, so making sure that those of you have... Um, do you guys have coffee shops or snack shacks that are connected or open at the same time? So you, even though it's your, you know, we're talking retail, you still want to incorporate all of those specials into your store at that same time. 
So don't forget, if it's Hawaiian weekend and you do a theme, maybe it's a drink special like a Mai Tai in the coffee shop. Um, but make those placements and those cards, those stands of um, specials all throughout that area as well, throughout your store. Um, I think that we will end up going around talking about like some best ideas in a minute and we'd like to hear from each one of you. I think everybody will gain the best knowledge learning from each other. So we're gonna touch on that a little bit. Um, is there anything else you wanna touch on before we get started in that? No. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to uh, start off with how you set up your store. Some of the important things you need to consider. Um, remember that threshold, which we call, when you, know, you first walk in that store, you've got five feet to 15 feet, okay? So you've got to worry about what you're gonna put in there. We call that the power wall, okay? So if you've got the customer's attention, you wanna use that power wall. You have to remember too, 90% of your customers turn right. I found that. So that walkway, you want to make sure you've got that walkway uh, available. Uh, I like what we call speed bumps. Okay, you want to slow that customer down so they look at the impulse. They might come in just for a bag of ice. You want to try to sell them something else. So we put speed bumps. Speed bumps would be something like that, where it catches their attention before they're going to buy the bag of ice. Okay, so you want to do things like that to make sure that you can get. You, you want to try to get as much buying power out of that customer. Uh, just like Lisa said, seasonals, got to change it each year. Change anything you're doing each year. Um, the other thing is, if you have an item that is high, going to be high profit, get that at eye level. Your lower grossing items do above or below, okay? You want that high price if you can do that. Uh, other than that, um, promotions, you know, we all do promotions on things we don't sell. You know, throw them in a bingo thing, put them in a paper bag, they don't know what it is. Um, I also do one with employees. I was telling them, we bought these flashlights that were horrible. They were the most ugliest thing you ever saw. You know, like 500 of them. So, yeah, they were really bad. Anybody else have those? Yeah. yeah, I mean, so what we did with it, between the staff, we said, okay, whoever sells the most of this will get a prize. You want to see everybody that came in. They said, don't you want to, you know, play something? Don't you want to play? You know, it's like they started promoting the sale that we were trying to get rid of, which is really, it worked really well. But then you have to consider the store. If you're a one-man show, you have to be considered you can see that whole store. You still have to worry about that. And, and just like you said, if you're doing food at the same time, that has to be consideration, how you're going to lay out your store. Um, I think I read... Um, Pinkwiss has a good idea how to lay out your store. So if, you, if you're not selling something in an area, do something like Lisa has, you know, try to do that. I was in a campground in Maine. They did the same thing, but they did it with those boxes, with the crates. And they took the crates and they put like four around, and then three around, and then two. And I'll tell you, I walked in, and that was the first thing I saw. So that's just another point that if you're having trouble with that, um, there is some things on, everybody can Google them. But be attention to where that customer is going. You want to keep that customer there as long as you can. Another thing I, I'd like to point out too is like, when, when I do a kid's display, I don't make them too tall for, for a plethora of different reasons. A lot of it is so that they're at the kid's level so they can say, mommy and daddy, I can want this. Another thing is, you know, kid, you know there's some humor in the kid. And it's a lot easier to see them if you don't make those displays just too tall. Right, you want to start? Okay, so we'll kind of go around the room um, and let's just talk about some ideas that you guys have done at your park. If you guys have any, yeah, if you guys have any questions, we can open it up to the floor. Um, we'll kind of start with that and then we'll end with like a recap and, and go from there. All right, where do we start? One thing that worked, one thing that didn't work. Mine's more a question. Um, one thing that worked in, oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> like she said, it has been proven, people generally go to the right. You can't go right in our store. You walk in our store and there's a wall all the way down.
Oh, on? So when you walk into our store, our front door, if you go to the right, you're gonna walk right into a wall. So walking into our store, you go straight all the way through, and then the next door takes you to our pool deck. And then we do have a back room that's our clothing store, but it's very hard to merchandise nice looking stuff because we just basically have a wall. So can you, can you use that wall as a power wall? And instead of doing all your t-shirts, could you put, you want to get that attention to go to your area, okay? So could you put a few of your, you know, put some t-shirts out there, put some other stuff, and use that wall with a little bit of your, your whole products. So they were going to come to you and say, wow, I really like that shirt. And you have to say, well, you have to go around the corner to it. Like you need something, you need something to get them to go to your store area. Or maybe it looks like putting um, structures like this in that walkway so they have to buy it and they'll leave there when they're wrong. That's why I said the power wall yeah. might work better for her. The right is the wall, the left is the counter. And then, like I said, that's the walkway to the pool deck. So you have people standing at the counter checking out. You have people along the wall looking at the candy, the toys, things like that. And you have people walking just to get to the pool deck as well. Our clothing is in the back room. You know, sometimes you might get a house club, display some clothes, some shirts, so people can see them up there. I, I'd say kind of going on what Eileen said is just, you know, it can be smaller. It doesn't have to be that big. Just do something that's catching them and drawing them to where you want them to go. So if you have to have other stuff on there, that's fine. But just make something, even if it's only this big, that, that gets them with the idea to keep going. At least it brings color. <laughs> yep, you just have to show them something that pops and, and be as creative as you can. And I know you can be creative because I've seen some of your work. So, so just, just bleed them on into there. Okay? Um, I was just going to say for our store, we also have a very small store and we had items that weren't selling. And last year we redid the whole store and just rearranged everything. And we sold so many more items that we've had for years prior just because we moved them to a different place. So that really caught attention of our customers. And they even commented, oh, these are really cool new items, even though they weren't. <laughs> yeah, that's so important. And I, I think that's like in those cases, that I, those two displays up there, you can use one and two if that's all you have left to pop it in there. And, and people think it's, it's brand new and they think there's more maybe, but if there isn't, you got rid of that one that you were trying to, too. Okay, anybody else have something they want to add? I'll elaborate just a little bit on the dowel. And I know a lot of you have seen the inside of my store if you've been to the RV shows. But if you take a dowel and put it through the sleeve, through the neck and out the other sleeve, and, gear, and, and gather it up, it displays a shirt so much better than a hanger. And a lot of us can't afford the full mannequin. But it's just a great way to display shirts. Yeah, but even, even like I said, too, if you, you can see how I have one of those T-shirts hanging over with what it's saying, they know it's a T-shirt. So, it, you know, the rest of them I just have folded in the, one of those little baskets. Those baskets don't cost much. You can have those all over if you want, different kinds, you know, different colors. This last season we had a lot of um, good feedback from posting videos, just doing demonstrations with our toys. If we had, we got new drones and I had one of our workers just test it out and I took a video of her and I put it on Facebook and we sold out. We had people that weren't even camping at the campground. They were 20 minutes away and they said, hang on to it for us. We're going to be down in a half an hour to buy it. I mean, it wasn't even in our store that long. So, and even just showing when the t-shirts come in or sweatshirts come in, any new clothing, just say, look what just arrived. And it's just, it's a frenzy. 
Um, so use social media because it will help greatly. That's a great idea, and it's it's fun to hear new things from somebody else that you know worked great. That's that's how we're all going to learn. So that's a great. I have a question. Um, so I really love your display up there. Um, in our store, it would be torn to shreds by all the little kids with their muddy fingers in like three seconds. Um, how do you do that? How do you? How, I mean, is is there a trick besides you know you can't scream at the kids because. I have that sign. It is, that is a tough one. That's really tough. I know I like, I see them come in like that. And I'm like. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But I'll tell you what, that's what, it's, it's, it's more of changing it a little bit to a boutique instead of just a store. You know, um, it will draw the kids. Colors and it does draw the kids. The only thing I, I try and say it as nice as I can is don't touch, gotta look and not touch. You know, and I, I'm kind of a patrol there. <laughs> you just, yeah, it is impossible, but you just have to do it as, in a, in a, as nice a way as you can and, and just keep putting everything back. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but I, also a lot of times there's people in the stores that are just running the stores and it's slow. You know, teach them how to fold them, teach them how to put it back. Has anybody ever used um, where you have, you're trying to, you're in this season and you're trying to get rid of t-shirts or something like that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll give out one as a prize and then everybody comes in and buys it. Or you, it's July 4th, you give up, you give up the light sticks, okay? And then because this kid has it, the other kid has it. It's a great way to keep moving your merchandise through. Um, the other thing, I don't know if any of you have porches outside your store. What we've done is now all of our new merchandise will be coming in. So this leftovers from last year will go on a rack, you know, regular clothes rack, outside. When they're checking in, you know, it's going to say sale. It may only be 10%, you know, whatever it is. But they're going to see the new merchandise and they're going to see the old. So what happens with us, I, I know, is because you have to know your customer too. Know who, you know, know who your customer is. When you're looking at that customer, see what they walk past and see what they stop and look at. It'll give you an idea of what you should be buying for next year. I mean, if you have something here and everybody just goes like, you know that was not something you should have bought. But if someone goes and they're like, you see, well, you know that took, that took some time. They like that item. They might not buy, but it's something that you can consider buying. But the sales rack outside really works well to get rid of and get your new stuff in. That's and another way of getting them into your store as well. Just, just as much as you want to move them down those aisles inside, you want them to come in. So if you make sure that your walkway into your store looks <coughs> fun and exciting, you know, whether it's color or um, if you want to show something that, that you're you know, a lot of times we have those, those little lawn ornaments or whatever. You can put those in a little bucket or something. Just anything to, to draw them in. I know another thing we use is um, glassware. If you're doing some place, that goes back to those promotions that we talked about. Um, if you just get one person to carry that glass around and be sipping it, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? And of course, and then again, we'll throw in that social media piece and that'll top it off. So I have two stores. One is at my campground that is 50% seasonal, 50% overnight. The other is at my all seasonal campground. So I'm always curious to hear from folks, what are you actually selling to seasonals? Because that is such a hard market, I feel like. Any suggestions on what really goes well with your seasonals? Exactly, and if you tell them what's new, I, every, almost every time I bring something into the store and somebody, our store is connected to our bar. So anytime that somebody comes in and set, you know, to have a beer, I say, oh, you gotta come in the store, I just got these in. You know, and then that blasts through all the 
<laughs> you know, it does help a lot. But I agree with you. It's seasonals are tougher because they're, you know, the only thing that I do do for them is I will do a 50% off like twice a year. And I make sure that I don't have too much of my new stuff in there or I exclude that. I find in the all seasonal park that if I, I had a system where I had a yearly sale, no one would buy anything until the sale because they knew and they all kind of like talked amongst themselves and were like, oh, let's just all wait. Um, so I've actually discontinued it there. I do do a sale at my other store. Um, my end of the year sale to get rid of that unwanted merchandise, we do literally like a Black Friday um, where it's the lowest price for a very specific time period and then we do it in the evening. And I literally have about 45, 50 people waiting outside the store for us to unlock the door. Um, and that really empties the shelves. We do it um, just about at the end of the season. We have a couple of Halloweens after is it. So that works really well. But at the all seasonal part, it was trouble. <laughs> Uh, we're fairly new, so I'm just wondering, what would be the percentage in your store that you carry that is branded versus uh, forgotten type items, just sundry type things, and what are just trinkets? They're into, you know, the firewood, the ice, you know. And then that depends, do you have a, do you have a tenor or a trailer? Trailer people have their stuff. You know, if you've got a big tent business, you want to cater to those, they're going to buy your groceries. They're going to, and when they're in there at the groceries item, that's when you use your counter where they're checking out or your wall. That's where you want to get that impulse buying from. Them. They're coming in for that, you know, the thing they have to have. And now you're going to tell them. And if you've got good salespeople and you give them ideas about the promotion, they're going to follow up with that. You know, because you take your time checking out. By the way, you want to look at this? We can go for some that. But yeah. I think I, we do a really good business with our, our apparel with weekenders also. I found that I have to have good stuff. It, it, they don't want the cheap stuff, they want it good. And you know, they've already paid for their sites, so their sites are paid for. They have cash in their pocket and they're gonna spend it. You, you know, so up the price a little bit, get a good item in there, they're gonna spend their money in your store. And as far as, you just, like she said, you just have to have some of each thing. You have to have some candy, of course, that sugar shit. You have to, you know, you have to have your ice cream or whatever, you just have to have some of everything. Um, in answer to your question about the seasonal thing, one thing that we do each year is our seasonals like the idea that um, we have a shirt or a sweatshirt or a jacket, just one of those items each year that only the seasonals can purchase. So the way we do it is that um, we take an order up until, let's say like till May 1st. All the orders have to be in by May 1st, then we do the order and then they, those shirts are specifically, only a seasonal owns, has them. Sometimes we'll put the year on it, sometimes we'll put a slogan on it for the year, but it always has our, our campground name on it.
I know something that we did in the past, um, we actually had trouble with our seasonals coming in to actually spend money in our store. Uh, it was, they would come and buy clothing, but it was just kind of tough seeing them come in periodically throughout the season. They would maybe do it in the beginning and then they'd wait till the end of the year, Labor Day for our sale, and then they'd come back. But we saw most of our overnight weekender campers coming in a lot more, obviously. Um, so what we did to get our seasonals to come in is anytime they purchased something in the store and it had to be on like toys, clothing, souvenirs, it couldn't be like firewood or ice, it had to be certain things, uh, we would give them a ticket. And then at the end of the season, we would draw three winners and then they could get $25, $50 or $100 off next season's rate. So that was really good for them too. They really liked feeling like they were given a chance at saving some money in the following year. So our clientele is a little different. They, some of them just don't want to spend that much. Um, and it just, like you know, somebody said, you really have to know your clientele too. So we kind of played with that a little bit, but they really liked the ticket idea. The hard part that we had with it was the employees didn't know who was seasonal versus who was overnight. And so our new employees had a hard time. We had to make sure to tell our seasonals, you must let them know that you're seasonal so they can give you that ticket. Otherwise, they'd be coming back in two weeks saying, well, I bought a t-shirt like two weeks ago. Can I still get my ticket? So that was something that we came across. But they really liked the idea of being able to win some money. We do something similar to that, too. Um, and they can get... We, we give them ten punch cards, and with there's 10 numbers on it. They can get them for food, drink, or purchases from the store, punches. And when they get those 10 punches filled out, then they go into drawing for, we do $500 off one person gets for the next season. Um, and that, as far as knowing who's seasonal, they have the card. So, you know, that kind of takes that away. Uh, we uh, pull our seasonals in the store by every seasonal when they sign up. They get two coffee mugs from Severson and Associates uh, with their name on, and they get free coffee all season in the store. So they have to take their mug, go in the store every day for their free coffee, and they do all come in for their free coffee. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> seasonals love free stuff, don't they? <laughs> So um, to comment on your, uh, your description, Boulder Creek, with your tickets, um, we did it with tickets, um, and we switched. Now we just track it in our POS um, because our, our point of sale has that ability. So you just have to give your site number or your last name, and then it automatically tracks all of your store sales. And then we just use a report for how many tickets they get, and we do it at the seasonal party, and we just hand them their tickets. Okay, just I'm just, because we did that, and I know your heartache there, and like how much trouble that is, and so I just want to say, we went digital, and it's so much better, so I recommend it to a friend. Okay, um, and I have to say, for me, to get seasonals in the store, I understand your, your issue you're describing, um, and so one thing I found, when my mom used to order the apparel years ago, she ordered a ton, and we always had a ton left over, and so yeah, I already waited for the sales, so I super scaled back, and actually created like a supply demand kind of scenario where like we run out of stuff fast and then people know. Um, and I and then I cranked it back up after I like went to really short supply. So everyone like runs in the day that the shirts arrive or otherwise they won't have their size. So now I last a little bit better through the season. But I kind of purposefully run out of stuff because I find that, you know, even if maybe I could have made a couple more sales in August, um, it's better to have them rushing to get their shirt that they want rather than to make sure I, I had enough of the purple sweatshirt to make it through the summer. If they really want a sweatshirt, they'll buy the blue one, you know? Um, and I just want to say back in your comment with um, what to have. I would say if it can be branded, you should be selling it branded. Why have cups that don't have your name if you could have cups that do have your name and it's 25 cents more? It's worth it. Um, that would be my number one. My number two is, and this is what I already said, but it's not very helpful. You do have to kind of figure it out. I could tell you what I do for my mix at my campground, and it may not at all apply to your situation. For example, I'm really far away from like anything. I am 15 minutes from a very small local grocery store. I am 30 minutes from a Walmart. 
nobody's going anywhere. They're going to buy it from me, even if it's more. But somebody else might be two miles from a Walmart. There's no way that they can compete with Walmart. So you have to kind of look and see, and it'll probably be a lot easier after season one. Honestly, I'd recommend keep a list of what people ask for. Um, because depending on what's close to you, or if you have a lot of bugs, if you have a lot of sand, if you have a lot of water, that kind of depends. I would say, like I already said, clothing goes really, really well. Um, you want probably some basic stuff that they might have forgotten. Um, and then you want some impulse stuff. Um, but mess around with it. A lot of us have, that are in this room have been operating stores for a lot of years, and we are constantly tweaking. And like, I might have had my toy aisle perfect five years ago. That is not what my toy aisle looks like today. Because you know what? There was a time when you couldn't keep glow sticks on the shelf. Nobody cares about glow stuff. Now they all want like stuffed animals or what I can't keep on the shelves. And so it's a constant adjustment for trends. So there's no right answer. Isn't that a great answer? You know, one thing I found at the show is don't be afraid to ask the other campgrounds what they think is, is good. Because even if, if you don't buy it or whatever, sometimes if, if five people told me, oh, that was, I, I'm getting that. I'm getting that. That makes me think, you know, maybe I need to. You know, even if it didn't catch my eye. And because another thing is you can't like everything you put in your store. You know, if you do, you're not going to have a successful store. Because, you know, sometimes I, I do that, oh, that, I don't like that. But then I, I get some, and somebody, I mean, it's the fastest thing off the shelf, and I think, be open-minded. <laughs> you know? So you, you really have to remember that. But don't be afraid to try something. Just try it in a smaller quantity if you're afraid of it. One thing that we've found is, um, I'll use the example of those fire logs that have the faces. First year we had them, couldn't give them away. Second year we couldn't keep them in stock, so then we're like, oh, okay, well now they've taken off. So we bought them the third year, again, couldn't give them away. So every year fluctuates too. What could sell really super good one year, so you stock up on it really good the next year, the following year it won't sell at all. So it's really hard, it is a, it's a gamble. Those situations, I think that things change every year. So maybe if you did buy, if they did sell good, maybe just not quite so much. You still get some, but maybe not as much. I need to turn things around just a little bit. Um, my campground is just outside of Wisconsin Dells. If you haven't bought your souvenir by the time you get to my campground, I don't understand why you would want to buy one at my campground other than it's branded. So is there a suggestion for what we should stock? I have a, a very small store space. Um, we stock the sundries. But somebody said, well, you know, you should uh, have groceries. I'm like, I am not going to stock groceries when Walmart is just over there. No. I mean, it doesn't make sense for me. So you know, small space in the heart of, of tourist country, what do you stock? We do ice cream. Is it on? Um, we're on the east side of Lake Winnebago, totally away from the Dells, so we're like on our own. Walmart six miles down the street. Yes, seasonals want to go get their own thing, but they always get caught. So just be positive. They get caught without something that they need. They'll still come up for the, you know, Gatorade and whatnot, so I still keep the minimal groceries, um, ice cream, everything, just in case. And they've become to start relying on that. So I hear you. It's, I, I feel for people on the other side with the, the Dells, you know.
you have a, how you get your seasonals in the store? Well, we have this, this thing works for us every week. So we do contest, okay? So if it's, and they, as you said, they win a prize, so they like to do it. So like if it was Pirate Weekend, I would have, uh, you know the plastic little swords? Okay, I'd have them in a jar, and they have to come in. And then we started on Friday, and I'm, whatever's on Saturday night after, entertainment, you know, we tried that weekend, but I'll put it on the week before, so I'll have it on the shelf for seven days, okay? If it's um, Christmas in July one year, I put those little white, little, they look like snowballs, and I have like some, I have all kinds of different sized things. Wine weekend, I got the wine glass that's that big, and I bought all kinds of, you know, wine things. But that, my seasonals will be there as soon as they come in the door on Friday. And when that's your point where, at that point, you've got to still work with them. But it gets you, if you're looking to get them in the store, and on our, on our Facebook page, we'll say, okay, this week we're counting candy canes. You know, we might have a candy cane contest. But whatever it is, it's a counting contest. And they come in faithfully to, do, to make sure, because they think they're going to win a prize. But it's a great way, and it's easy. You know, it's a great activity. We let the kids do it, too. You know, we let, anybody wants to do it. We just keep a steno pad and put their name down and whatever number they think. But it's, it's a, it, it works for us. And while they're there, I tell them they need the new, the new, all the new stuff that we just bought. Okay. Any? So do you have a, a whole lot of, of your different activity weekend stuff that you actually put away and you have a lot of it? Yes. I have Tupperware. I have a room probably half the time of this of Tupperware. Like, so whatever my theme weekend is, I'm very serious. So I drive everybody like crazy. So, we, you Good. Know, you know, we'll do, we do the halfway to St. Patty's Day party. You know, so there's a bin and just, you know, so then I have all these little showers, you know, in a, in a different type of jar. And I try to find different jars to kind of make it a little different. Uh, we have chili cook off and I found a chili so we filled it with chili powder, you know, so. Um, I'm sorry, I should be using this. Um, but yeah, so whatever, whatever, we try to stick with the theme, but I do it every weekend. And each year, you know, I can't do the same. Like we did an armed forces weekend, so I bought myself um, a truck, you know, an army truck. And then I went to the dollar store and got little army men and filled them in the truck. And so for our, that, they had to do that. Um, so yeah, and so all winter long, You'll see me at a restaurant with a piece of paper, like, because I had this idea, you know, and kind of say, okay, this is what we're going to do. But it does bring them in your store, and you have that chance then to sell. Do you change a lot of your store inventory with that also? Do you have more store selling inventory that you switch out to? The, when we do that, when we're trying to get rid of inventory, we'll do, like, grab bags. We'll do different grab bags together. And then... On that weekend, we'll put, you know, a big, uh, big wicker basket of your grab bag things. Um, dinosaur weekend, we'll put dinosaurs in a big thing and tell them to adapt a dinosaur. But if you're doing something, yeah, and we put little tags on them, you know. But if you're doing some theme weekend, which most of us do, and you incorporate the theme, but your your ultimate goal there is to get them in the store to buy something. And if they bring the kids with them, you're you got it because they're looking at the, the toys over there and they're gonna go home with the toy. I mean, most kids, they're gonna have a fit, you know. But you don't like reset half your store every weekend for Re merchandise to sell? Um, we do a lot of restocking. Okay. Um, we then then we have, a, we have our bins that, uh, we use a POS system. Mm -hmm. When the items come in the store, they're already put into our POS with the inventory. They're already marked with the price on it. So whoever has to restock, which is usually like a Monday, um, we just bring, you'll bring up the bin and maybe you sold more boy toys. You know, so the bin you'd bring up boys. Maybe you sold more girls. You know, maybe you sold more um, Severson's mugs. <laughs> you know, and we'll fill it that way. But yeah, we, we, we restock each weekend. Yeah, changing is good. Yeah. Changing is good in the store. Um, so another thing that we do in our store, our bar is combined with the store. So it, you walk in and the bar's right there. 
Um, but we're a beer bar only. So one thing we have every Friday night for our seasonals is happy hour. So it's just 50 cents off their beer, their favorite beer. And every Friday night, our bar is packed for probably two to three hours with our seasonals. And then in turn, they're buying other things that are in the store. So that's really helped us. We do that as well. We have um, um, at nine o'clock, we do a free drawing for the entire park. And so that brings them up into the bar. Just And we just do like any extra things that we want to get rid of we put those out and then we give them everybody a free ticket and then we draw until those items are gone and then we let the seasonals have a chance a separate ticket that they can pull they get 10 chances for that free drawing at the end of the year so i mean they all come up for that We struggle with the two. Um, we usually are open at eight, and we usually close up around nine. But if I'm in, if I'm in the bar or in the store, I'll keep it open as long as I have people in there. Anybody else want to say how they do? So we really change it seasonally. Um, so when we open April fifteenth, we're open nine to five on weekdays. And on weekends, we're pretty much always open at least 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, then as we slowly get busier and busier, as we approach like school getting out and such, then weekdays we go um, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Then we do 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the busiest time of year and uh, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. on the weekends. So um, we were, but it's literally like... I have one of those boards for store hours where you can like pop out the numbers because it's every week I am altering it. Or like we do a lot of Wednesday check-ins, so I'll usually lift my hours Wednesdays and Thursdays before I lift my Monday and Tuesday hours. Um, but it don't feel like you have to be married to whatever you do in high season because off season's so different, at least for us. I don't have a campground, but I have two daughters who like to shop. <laughs> and I also <laughs> purchase, so I'm probably your customer. Um, I do have experience in marketing, though, and things that I look for, my kids look for, typically are anything that's humorous. Um, it's something that we all have in common. We all like to laugh. They're um, at your site for uh, the weekend to have a good time, so they're usually in a good mood or want to be in a good mood. Um, clothing that's humorous, mugs that are humorous, any kitchen items, stuff I can use at home and off season because I am a weekender. So things that I can keep in my kitchen that remind me of camping when I'm not camping, um, night lights, things like that. Um, and then purchasing is, as you were describing, um, setting up kind of displays and stuff. After holidays, uh, especially Walmart um, or the craft stores, they all have those aisles that have things for sale, 75% off, 60%. Off. That's a great time to pick up for next year, to pick up your um, merchandising items. Good ideas. Okay, so I stole this idea from Bud. I don't know if he stole it from somebody else, but something great that he had was after a wagon ride, give everybody on the wagon ride a ticket for, and I can't exactly remember what he did, but I think it, ice cream, dollar off ice cream or soda, it'll get them in your store. So use your activities too. If you have those themed weekends, the scheduled activities, you can give them little coupons for coming to the activity and then get them to come into your store. So you can give them little discounts here and there. It doesn't have to be very much, but just something. And then they're also going to tell people hey, go to the next activity because who knows, you might get something at the next activity. Um, not that we want to give everything away, but you know they love having that opportunity to try and win something or have a chance at something. The, one of the items that you might want to consider carrying in your store is to think about rainy weekends. Um, so for rainy weekends, if we have to go to the storeroom and grab them, we'll put puzzles out. Kids are really getting back into doing puzzles, you know, or we'll do, we have games like checkerboard stuff. So we always kind of think that, okay, this is a rainy weekend, so we're not going to be able to be selling the swimmies. You know, that's not, gonna, that's not going this weekend. We have three days of rain. So we will bring in 
the gear, that, so it's nice to have some items for that because if they're stuck in their trailer, you know, what are you going to do? So, you know, we all, everybody has playing cards. But think about games like that. They work out really well. And, I mean, I sell, I'll sell games for $25, you know, these, and it's amazing. But it's raining, and you've got four kids in a can trailer. You'll buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> so piggybacking off of the Bud coupon after an activity, um, one thing that we do, we have a redemption center for our arcade. It's in our store, though, so we don't have to staff a separate location. We've also tied that into our activities. So now when you come to our activities, you win redemption points. Um, and we hand out coins, they're worth 10 points, which is equivalent to 10 cents worth of merchandise. And they usually win one or maybe five. So they, you know, they go and they play at the carnival for an hour and a half and they get 50 cents worth of prizes. But they love it and they come up and they get fruities and bracelets and army soldiers, I mean all sorts of stuff. We get a lot of it from like oriental trading and those sorts of things. But literally the entire family pours into the store after every activity. We tell them, you can wait and do all the activities all weekend and save up your prize points, do they? No, every activity they come in. So that's a great way to get people into your store. It also gets people into the arcade because we say, but if you need more points to get that next level up item, you just have to go spend some money in the arcade and you get some more tickets. So that's worked out really well for us without having to staff an additional area. We, we do almost similar, but we don't do the arcade. It would be too much for us to manage, you know, because it's a separate building. We give out what we call wooden nickels and for the prizes. And they're worth, basically, they're worth like a quarter or 50 cents. But they look like a wooden, you know, and we had them branded. So some of them keep it, you know, our names on them. Right. If they want to keep that, right. So if they want, yeah. And you're 100% you're right. When they won 50 cents, they're going to spend it. And we don't have anything in our store for 50 cents. You know, candy bars are a dollar. Ice cream is more than that. So they have to put more money in. And we do exactly like you do. It's a great idea. OK. Anybody else? I have another suggestion is, and I have become a cricket holic, and I use my cricket all the time. You can get some little items and put a vinyl on them, and they're branded, and sell them, and they're just a great way to get your name out. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll meet you after class. <laughs> We'll show you. Okay, I think um, I want to. I, I think um, we had a lot of good input. These are the best as far as how I'm concerned, how I learn. I've picked up I don't know how many ideas from each and every one of you. So, all in all, we all taught this class <laughs> and, and learned from each other. So, I really appreciate your input. That's what made it worth our hour here today. Uh.